automated cars, alternative fuels, gesture controls, cars that park themselves, new infotainment systems. It's all at the Consumer Electronics Show, and we talk about it all here on Talking Cars. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm John Linkov. Jake, we're sitting here in the world headquarters of Consumer Reports Auto Test Track. So why are we about to talk about the Consumer Electronics Show? Because the Consumer Electronics Show has more and more to do with cars every single year. And this is like the ultimate. I mean, the car companies are there. They're announcing things there. Um, it's turning into a bit of an auto show. It is. It might as well be the car electronics show. You yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of big trends coming out of the show. So we're going to go through some of those trends, talk about what we think of them and how they'll influence you. One big trend, automated cars. Cars that can drive themselves. Yeah. Um, a lot of proof of concepts. I don't think that we're going to really be seeing them. And even the manufacturers saying it's going to be a number of years, you know, whether it's BMW with a car that will navigate itself through a parking lot and actually stop when there's a, an object in the way. Or even you can press uh, something on your cell phone and it'll go off and find a parking space. Or on itself. your smart watch. Your because smart that, watch. that's the big thing this year is, oh, my watch can do stuff. Yes, exactly. It's like Inspector Gadget. Yeah, everything needs to get smaller on the watch and then we'll have the bigger phablets. So, you know, you can <laughs> compensate there. Um, that Audi showing a vehicle like that. So. Right, Audi had a... Um, they had an A7 Seven. named Fre uh, Jack. I don't know why you would name your A7 Jack. Gunther, Dieter. Dieter. That would make sense. Right, right. No, no. They had an A7 named Jack that it drove basically drove itself with someone in the front seats from uh, San Francisco to CES. Yeah, and you could press a button and you could regain control. And you press another button and then it takes on, you know <clears throat> control on itself. In, in my feeling is that there's a lot of infrastructure that's going to need to be consistent for this. I mean, you drive down a highway and there's missing lane markers. You know, if it's going to rely on lane markers and rely on signage, it's going to rely on a lot of the state and federal government making sure that the roads are up to spec. The car company can deliver it. Whether the state and federal infrastructure is there, we'll see. Your thoughts on? Well, I think what's really interesting is we're seeing a little bit of a shift. So some of the uh, car automation that we've seen before was almost like, you know, the car will nudge you into lane or maybe while you're sitting there, you can take your eyes off the road and it'll drive a little bit. But now we're seeing this, this kind of the shift into get out of the car and the car goes finds a parking spot and it mm. goes parks itself, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of a more useful feature than just making it so you could be inattentive while you drive. So, um, <laughs> you know. You but, got your watch, you got to play. Well, I'm looking at my smart watch. But, but do, you, do you think parking is that hard? Well, but it is a big deal. So, I mean, say you're going somewhere. I mean, it, theoretically, your car could kind of drive around a lot, you know. It could drive around the block while you're in, you know, jumping. I mean, think about if you're in New York or something mm -hmm. and you need to run in somewhere and you can't just leave your car there double parked. Christmas time shopping. Well, no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All the cars are going to be having this, <laughs> this circling. This, it's going to be a parade of these well, automated that's cars that's going it, around that's and around. What I was you know, I'll admit, when I first saw the BMW i3, that, you know, you get out of the car, you can tell it to park, it will scan, and it will find a parking spot. I thought, how lazy do you have to be? Get out of the car, park your car, walk into the restaurant, you know, give a valet 10 bucks, you know. But, well, but that's but, what it is. But it's, on it's the other hand, uh, it's a very, that's a very American-centric view. You know, I spent Christmas in Europe. You know, it's very congested. You know, it's hard to find a place to park. It's... I find it not surprising that it's the German companies. You know, you have, for the last 20 years, the congestion in, in the Autobahn and the city centers, you know, have taken the driving country into more of a stop-and-go country. And it's very interesting to see that they are taking, okay, what's inefficient? The congestion. How do we get rid of it? Self-driving cars that will make them more, you know, travel together. They will park themselves. It will be very good, and then we can go drive it our Bugattis at 150 miles an hour. It will be very yeah. good. Well, exactly. but that's the irony is that here are these car companies that have so much promoted the joy of driving. You know, like Audi, <laughs> Audi, BMW. And it's There's, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't need to drive. There's no joy of parking though. So, so I mean, right. but, that's but, a but, real good point. But, but going back to what John said, I mean, the the. The automated cars are still not going to play nice with the non-automated mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Yes. So, and that's the problem. So, so yes, I mean, they could go park itself, but can the car go pick up the ticket? You know, can the par car go and say, hey, are, are you getting out? <laughs> can the car say, you know. Can the car oh, defend itself ahead. when someone else tries to cut into oh, that parking exactly. spot? Is it going to wave no, someone no, no, ahead? No, no. When, <laughs> when, when, your Audi, when your Audi driving itself decides to cut off the BMW i3 driving itself for the parking spot at the <laughs> Macy's <laughs> park. Can you imagine Christmas? You're just going to come out and there's just going to be this pile of <laughs> expensive German cars all it's cluttered It's going to be together. like a viscous. <laughs> I was thinking like vehicle to vehicle gesturing, like let's send it like little bad data packets blink, blink, or something. Blink, blink. <laughs> yeah. But you know, there's got to be something to the parking thing because a big theme of the show is parking paranoia. 
You know, it's, it, it, the, yeah, almost yeah. everybody is showing a self-parking system. <laughs> people like driving, they don't like parking. So let, let the car do that part. It's hard enough for people to drive the car straight. Parallel parking, backing into a space, you know. Well, I mean, there's the troubling. other part. I'm not sure how much people, or these, these car companies, I'm not sure how much I think people like driving. Because you look at Mercedes-Benz's mm. concept of the automated car, and you look inside of it, and it's, it's very much like a business jet. I don't mean the cockpit either. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. in the back, you're all sitting facing each other. You know, it's, it's very much like a living room. There's giant screens on the side of the doors. Efficiency you know? of time. You know, the people paying the money for a vehicle like that who are used to being driven, well, now you have four people, you, you have more opportunity to work. <laughs> that's what I really want. I want yeah. more opportunity to, to work. To work. <laughs> but, you know, that's funny. You know, I, I went to a workshop on this, and they said that's basically what you're going to have. The automated car will give you, make you give more time at working, because now you don't have to drive, and more time shopping. Yep. Because what else are you going to do? You'll have your drone deliver your uh, package to your car while you're in traffic working through the sunroof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, there are a lot of drones out there. Um, you know, other car companies, Volvo said they'll put 100 automated cars in customer hands by 2017. You know, a lot of companies making these comments. You know, it's funny, it, there's this, this will happen, I think this will happen quicker than you think, but it won't happen as soon as you think. You know, the idea that I can totally get into a car and it will totally drive itself. I, I just have this vision of, you know, Wally, -E, the movie Wally, -E, where everyone's sitting, they're all fat and they're eating and they're looking at the ads as they're being traveled around. I mean, is this the future? Is this the automotive, like, dystopia that we have it's to look so, forward to? It is so dystopian. It is, you know, you add to that the stuff that Ford was talking about that. And you know, one of the things they're working on with Mobility Solutions is this will track you it can track your driving in every single car that you drive, and your insurance is going to be based on that. And that's, it's all. Pandora's box is opened already on that with the, you know, you have the plug-in where you with can voluntarily the, yeah. do that, mm -hmm. so why not just have it integrated in? And I'm not advocating for it, I think it's it, it, expletive, it, uh, you know. If this is the future, I just gotta you know, give a shout out to BMW who has demonstrated automated drifting. So, at least good <laughs> for that. They've showed automated drifting. <laughs> Can't drift yourself, just press this button, <laughs> up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B, and the car will drift for you. Hooligan button. Exactly. <laughs> um, something, else, uh, you know, something else that the future might be bringing uh, at CES is uh, alternative fuels. BMW, they showed uh, solar-based recharging for your home, you know, hoping to bring down the cost. Uh, probably the, by far the bigger news is Toyota gave free, you want to use Toyota's fuel cell patents? Go ahead, mm -hmm. they're free. That's very similar to what, uh, what Tesla has done too. Yeah. So I mean, if, if this is going to catch on, if we're going to go into fuel cells or, or electric vehicles are going to change the industry, I think there's a recognition that everyone's got to work together on this. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where you know you look at Tesla setting up the infrastructure of, of fast charging. You look at Toyota setting up infrastructure for for hydrogen fuel cells. Mm -hmm. Um, hydrogen fuel cells is, you know, really interesting. I mean, they're actually accelerating in terms of that technology a lot faster than anything else. So, you know, it's, it's chicken and the egg though. We got to get that, that infrastructure going. That's true. I mean, right now we're driving. We have a uh, Tucson fuel cell vehicle, and you know it it does the trick. You know, mm -hmm. there's some frustrations with you know the local f fueling infrastructure, but you know it is a viable option. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, one other thing is that you know giving away these patents. It sounds like it's very altruistic, but it's actually very clever because you get more companies jumping on your bandwagon. Sure. Uh, like if you're Tesla, maybe you could sell them batteries in the giant battery factory you're building in Texas. If you're Toyota, maybe you can leverage, you know, you're leveraging supplier bases. It, yeah. just, it just drives cost. I mean, if you're marketing a new technology, you want more people on board. You don't want to be the only people out there. And the benefit is, look, if it, if it slims down the standards, you know, yes, on one end you make it monopoly, on the other hand, though, you're not having competing standards, you yeah, know, sure. which will just hurt the consumer at the end. You know, so maybe they're the anti-patent troll in some ways. You know, but they're yeah. going to make money from it. Let's, you know, let's not yeah. feel bad for them. Uh, something trendy at CES is gesture control. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all your fingers, not just just one finger. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it could be that finger too. Yes. Well, that's a good finger. I mean, you know, BMW showed that you can change your volume by just. You know, who is this? Your, yeah. <laughs> and it was a buck because there was a little guy in the back raising the volume. <laughs> <laughs> the you didn't see the arm that reached up and grabbed the there, volume. Dump. There like, may you know. be a point to this, but I mean, for BMW, going like this instead of going like this. 
Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Really? The knob was right there. The knob's right right three there. inches away. It's, it's like, why didn't you just... Sitting in front of the steering wheel and going like this, <laughs> you can just grab it. Volkswagen did the same thing with the uh, Golf R screen, which is, is, I'm really sad they kind of messed up a Golf R. R to do this. <laughs> but, Golf R lame. Oh. You know, again, you have these gestures, and the idea is it can reduce distraction. You know, I'm not doing this, but, but if you're, it's a circus trick, you know, volume <laughs> up, you know, oh, that's better than just tapping a steering well, wheel. I, it's not. And I'll steal something I think I overheard you saying, is that for something like turning the volume, you know, or turning the steering wheel, you know, or doing something simple, we don't need this complicated process, but when you're burying a control, you know, four layers down, like seat heaters become buried, you know, where it's tap the screen, then choose the seat heater, not the seat uh, right. steering wheel heater, right. then go three taps, that's where it would be great, mm -hmm. you know, so that you reduce the distraction. Just turn the volume up for God's sake. But, but, uh, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but you hit it. I mean, this is the thing. It's like some of the controls are getting so bad that now we've created these new band-aids that we didn't even have to have yeah. if you didn't screw up the controls in the first place. Right. If you had so, just left me the normal nut, if you not button, if you had just left me the right. yeah. button or the, the Audi, the, the Audi seat heater that went one through six was a, was a wheel. It was perfect. It took up about this right. much space. So, so now you take the, the knob away. You put some capacitive slider that doesn't work at all, and you're like, oh, but you have voice controls. You can say volume up, or now you can go like this. It's like, why did you put the <laughs> knob? Uh, yeah. Anyway. I, I digress. Yep. No, well, no, no. I, I think you're, <laughs> you know, the, the irony of all this is that we're heading with automated cars, you're heading to a gesture controls. You're not going to have a steering wheel. Maybe you'll just do this. <laughs> go over there. <laughs> <laughs> just go together. Go Don't hit just, that. You can just go, lean back go, and do like this and, you go know. There. Yeah, uh, probably much closer to production. Uh, we've seen some new infotainment systems coming out there. Uh, probably the big news, and it, it came out before, but we've seen now or played with prototypes of it, is Ford. My Ford Touch sync is three. yeah, sync my, three. Ford my Ford Touch is dead. Uh, Buy Ford a moment. Touch. Buy Ford Touch. <laughs> uh, sync three looks to be a big improvement from what yeah, we've seen. Yeah, it, it it looks very very nice. I mean, it looks it's very reminiscent to to uh, you connect, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you get the big icons at the bottom. You don't have them hidden in the corner behind the bezel yeah. like some of the Ford products, <laughs> which is a tap to bring up the tap. You <laughs> know, again, you know, multiple steps. You know, or in Q where you have to like do what a gesture yeah. and Q to uh, exceed oh, that's right. the thing. That, that's that's control. the earliest implementation of gesture right, controls. Right. Yeah. Um, Look, it was a low bar to, to, to improve upon. <laughs> uh, you know, let, let's not hide from that fact. Good, I, I'm not, I'm, you know, pinching might be nice while you're sitting and demonstrating, you know, to mm -hmm. in, increase the screen on, on the map and such. But, you know, still at the end of the day, you're, you should be focusing here, driving, not, okay, did I pinch the right place? Because on a cell phone, you have a problem with pinching. You know, that's true. You're sitting and that's all you're whatever. doing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all you're doing. Let so. me throw this out, though. Um, you look at what Ford did. And Ford was out there very quick with my Ford Touch. I mean, they took a risk. Mm -hmm. They said, cross the board, we're going, this is gonna be the way of the future. The problem with doing that is being first, they got to make all the, the guinea pig errors. Yep. Mm -hmm. But because they were first, maybe they could get it right this time. Because it looks good, and maybe that they have more experience that, you know, you know, again, being first. I mean, we saw with iDrive. Exactly. Look yeah. at iDrive. Yeah. Look at the, the European luxury market with all this connectivity that they had. Well, they were doing it 10 years ago, so now they could do it reliably. Mm -hmm. It was terrible 10 years ago, yeah. and my forward touch was terrible. But now they got a good opportunity to be a leader here. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, something else we saw, um, you know, if your car company doesn't exactly come up with a great solution. There are other solutions. Yay. There's uh, there's CarPlay from Apple. There's Android Auto. And you're now seeing very soon to market production systems that will mm -hmm. incorporate both. Well, you have Hyundai, Hyundai coming out with uh, their display audio system that not only will it combine both of both those systems, but if you don't have navigation, it will just use what's on your phone. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is I really, truly believe this is the ultimate because the problem is the car companies, as good as they can be, they cannot keep up with the pace of consumer electronics. They cannot keep up with the pace with what's in your pocket. Because you know what? If you have an iPhone from two years ago, it is outdated and hey. old. Sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> the nerve here. Hey, hey, <laughs> Talking about you hey, too. Hey, oh. But you know what I mean? And that's the thing. It's like you're moving so quickly with smartphones. And if you buy a car and you got it four years old, even if you had the hottest, greatest new car, it is ancient technology. So offboarding that to the processor in your pocket 
yeah. is the way to go, and we're finally seeing that. Yeah, yeah, they can make money by by you have to upgrade to the system that allows that, but they don't have to have any of the, as much of the R and D of creating the system and partnering and such. You just you know let someone else do it. The, the thing you're saying, you know, in seven year gestation period from you know des styled design to car on on the lot. You know, you have four generations, five generations right. of iPhone sure. and operating <clears throat> system, yet you're stuck. You know, you're stuck with, unfortunately, you know, my Ford Touch, or you're stuck with whatever, you know, the Toyota, the old Toyota, or Subaru is a great example, oh, stuck yes. with this antiquated system. I know you have this reliable car that runs forever, but so, you're so, stuck right. with so, this I mean, system. I, I, I've said it before, but I mean, when it comes to the car, what you could get right is you could get a screen, you get your monitor, yep. you get a touch screen if you have, you have the mouse, which is your steering wheel controls or whatever that is, but all that else, that has to be upgradable, and this is a great way to do it by uporting it to uh, your smartphone. Yep. Sure, and uh, Hyundai's not the only company. Uh, Volkswagen's gonna be doing this too, offering both CarPlay and Android Auto very, very yep. soon. So, you know, also from a, from a, looking at it, not from the automaker, but from the customer, you know, it's nice that you won't be updating maps. Yep. Your maps will always be up to date. And the big right. frustration is points right. of interest. You know, oh there's, there's a new restaurant, you know, that hotel burned down. You know, there's, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're your recent vacation. Get things, over it. Things, I know it had good barbecue, but... Things, uh, <laughs> why do all the good barbecue places burn down? <laughs> yeah, but, like, but, you know, I had that with the McCann. We had the McCann. I mean, the car came out, you know, this this year, you know, but we took it up to uh, up to Maine and the, the, couldn't find the hotel. You know, like, it just wasn't updated and it was a brand new car and it's still... So even within the six months of purchasing it, it was outdated. Well, we already. find this, we find it, we've done surveys and we've, we've asked people what, they, what they're using. And people who have nav systems, by and large, also use sure. their phone oh, yeah. because of points of interest. They're yep. not updated and they're hard to get to, too. Yeah, or you're, you're driving it through Yelp or, or, or Open. Exactly or right. Some, some other And system. why do you want to pay extra? You know, you maybe don't want XM, you just want to run Pandora. Why do I want to pay extra for XM with traffic and why I can get Waze or I can get... And it's you so, know, the, the traffic on the phone is so good. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Google, Waze, all these things are so good. Yep, and, and these new systems using your phone, they'll drive that. Yep. We're talking about that here in our Connecticut office, but we have a team of reporters out at CES in Las Vegas reporting on all this. Uh, they're sending back uh, reports, they're sending back videos. Go to consumerreports.org slash CES to find out the latest from there. On the next episode, we're going to come to you from an actual car show, the Detroit Auto Show. Until then, we'll see you next time.